$4,300. When I first saw my calculator, I was so shook. And to be exact, I wasn't even there for a month. I was there for 25 days in November 2022. But for the title, I think it looks better if I put the word month in it. I didn't go to a lot of places in Thailand. I was mostly in Bangkok. So it was Bangkok to Phuket, to Bangkok, to Chiang Rai, and then back to Bangkok. I booked a round trip flight from Bangkok to Chiang Rai on day 15, and it was $115 round trip, but normally it's $30 to $50. I did vlog every day of the trip, but I didn't record every little thing. Some days I didn't feel that good, some days I didn't want to put on makeup, and some days I just feel busted. I did go alone, but I met a lot of people there. Before I went, there was only three people that I was planning on meeting up with, but then I ended up hanging out with like nine different people this was actually my first time in thailand brought one backpack if you do a carry-on or a check baggage it's kind of a hassle especially if you have early flight late check-in or late flight early check out it's easier if you just bring a personal item aka like a backpack and the backpack i had was like a 38 liter backpack so i guess this whole trip you can call it like backpacking but that's how i go places anyway whether it's one week or one month i always just bring one backpack make sure you go to gmm building don't like stalk on the actors or anything if you go up to the 30th floor that is where gmm tv is and they have like a gmm tv shop where you can buy merch you just can't really go in in to gmm tv there's a a lot of shopping mall in Bangkok but my favorite is Central World because it's so shoppable and down to earth and it's like city center. I can't see them was pretty good but it's kind of out there. I would list out all the places that I want to go to based on its location. For each day you want to list two or three places that you want to go to. That way it's not that overwhelming but you also have a sense of direction of where you want to go to. But of course you can always suggest it's not like you must go to those places but at least have an idea of where you want to go on a certain day. I go back and forth between the notes app and google map. Speaking of apps, so the three apps that you really need in Thailand are google map, line, and grab. As a tourist, those are pretty much the only three apps you need. Before I left the US, I got a sim card on eBay for $20 and that sim card has five gigabytes worth of data. When you land at the airport, there's also booths for you to get a sim card. I just wanted to get it beforehand. I actually kept track of all my expenses on the trip. I still have it actually. I can also insert a screenshot, but this is like the rough um, idea of what I do. Every time I make a transaction, I step aside and I like type it in real quick and then move on. Thailand is a super budget friendly place, but I splurge. I didn't really look at prices of things, which is kind of bad. Normally at home, I don't spend money at all. I divide it into three main categories, which is flight, accommodation, and other. Other includes everything else. It's kind of hard to keep track of the other because sometimes you have expenses that overlap. So for example, you might go to 7-Eleven and you buy food plus mosquito spray. Oh, actually, I'll insert like a screenshot of the summary of all of my expenses and this screenshot pretty much summarizes the whole financial aspect of the 25 days. Altogether, I exchanged $900 worth of US currencies at different rates. I feel like the best rate I've seen was at Super Rich and there is one at Gaysorn Village. It's like right in front of Starbucks. I divide everything by 36 because that's the average rate that I exchange a currency at. Some of the grab ride I use my credit card or some of the bigger purchases I also use my credit card and I use the Chase Sapphire Preferred. That's one of the most popular travel credit cards because the benefit that you get from it outweighs the $95 annual fee. With flights, it's quite hard to control unless if you have credit card points. Those are pretty set unless if you're really flexible with your dates. I booked three different flights. The first one was from US to Bangkok. Second one was Bangkok to Phuket and that was round trip. Third one is Bangkok to Chiang Rai. Both of the flights within Thailand was with Air Asia and apparently Air Asia is one of the best budget airlines but when I took it, it didn't feel like budget airline. So I stayed at six different hotels in 25 days. One hotel is called Sukhothoi. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but anyway, that one is in Bangkok, it's near Paya Thai Station. Booked a hotel for $73 a night, but I have $50 of annual hotel credit. Total, I spent $23 for one night at that hotel. I'll link the six hotels in the description, and then I'll also insert it right here with the average nightly rate that I booked it at. My fave out of the six is Travelod. 
and that is on Sukhumvit Soy 11. It was quite far from the train station. It was like a 10 minute walk to Nana station, but it was actually really quiet. Other includes everything else that isn't flight and accommodation. Within this other category, I divide it into four subcategories, transportation, clothes, self-care, and then food and miscellaneous is under its own. There are five main transportations. Okay, I said that there's five main transportation, but there's also ferry and buses in Bangkok. BTS SkyTrain. And with the BTS, you get a rabbit card, which I still have. This is like my souvenir. The second type of transportation is the MRT subway, which I did not take, but I did walk by Samyat Station. And that station specifically is really vintage. It kind of has Phuket vibes. I didn't try taking the MRT, but you can't use the rabbit card on the MRT because it's like a different thing. Taxis. You want to make sure that you tell them to use a meter because I heard that a lot of foreigners get scammed. I really like taking tuk-tuks, but I don't like the negotiating process. The seat can fit three people. So if you have two other friends, then you can split that tuk-tuk ride cost. The last is Grab, which is kind of like the Uber or Lyft. So you can book the Grab car or Grab bike. Grab bike is my favorite. I didn't try it until day 18 or 19. It's less than grab car but more than the sky train. Overall it's the fastest and it's the most fun. It is a little bit sketchy. You don't have helmet, you don't have knee pads, you don't have anything but it's so fun. I like the feeling of it because it's as if you have nothing to lose and you're just kind of like YOLO. Make sure you have a mask on if you don't want to eat dust and also I had contacts on so my contacts it was kind of drying because I don't have glasses so then my eyeballs were catching everything. There there are two main airports in Bangkok, which is Suwanapum and Donmum. With Suwanapum, you can use the airport rail link that's on the B floor of the airport. You just follow signs, to be honest. So you can take the airport rail link to Payatai Station. From Payatai Station, you can transfer to other stations. 45 baht for like a token and all, oh, it is so worth it. Altogether, I spent about $305 on transportation in a month. Your girl just bought a lot of clothes that I end up didn't really keep. So for the clothes category, I kind of treat it as renting clothes. And I'm trying to be a minimalist, so right now I don't really have that many clothes. If you look at my closet, which... Yeah, it's kind of messy right now, but I did do laundry twice. Total, I spent 624 baht for laundry. We rented the Thai costume on the second day since we went to the temples, and that was quite expensive. 1500 baht to rent the costume for the whole day. We just went to like a bougie place that was super popular, so that's why it's more expensive. 307 on clothes. You know, like if you don't really care about your appearance, that's good because you don't need to even think about this. But for me, altogether, I spent $668. And I think Thailand is really good for self-care stuff. Everything there but plastic surgery. If you do want to do plastic surgery, go to Korea. But if you want to do like lashes, nails, hair, then Thailand. And I did my hair for 5,000 baht. So it was like a treatment plus cut at Chi Salon and that's like the super popular salon that a lot of actors go to. But that's a one-time thing. I have not gotten a haircut since then. I'll link the places in the description because the places that I went to are pretty good. Food and miscellaneous. This includes the price to get into the temples. I don't know exactly how to pronounce but it's like Wat Arun is A-R-U-N. So that one was 100 baht to get in, but Wat Fo is 200 baht to get in. I've been trying to save this because it's so precious. This thing costs $10. I don't know if it actually works, but it smells like oranges. The credit card plus cash, minus transportation, minus clothes, minus self-care, and then I got the $673 for food and miscellaneous. This was my first time in Thailand. To be honest, the hardest part was booking a flight. Once you get there, it's more about learning to be alone without feeling lonely. That constant back and forth of hanging out with someone and then being alone and then hanging out again created a lot of internal conflicts in me. But that is also up to me to realize that people come and go in life. Some are here for vacation, some are here for school, some live in Thailand. Even if they live in Thailand, you're only there temporarily. But I want to remember the people that left a dent in my life. As time goes by, you experience new things that change the way you perceive your old memory. So even if I go to Thailand again, it would never feel like I did in these vids. And this memory costed me $4,300. So I came to the conclusion that I should just stay home and watch BL.